So, you know, the way we are going to handle this particular uh, model is, you know, we are going to divide the entire economy into uh, you know, uh, two sides, you know, the demand side and the supply side. Okay. So demand side. And then you have supply side. So on the demand side, you know, we are going to divide the entire economy into, you know, a goods market and the money market. Okay. So, sorry. So this is goods market. And then you have money market. Okay. Uh, and on the supply side, you know, we'll, uh, we'll just be looking at labor market. Okay. Uh, so we are kind of going to assume that capital is fixed. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's fixed. And so, you know, we are only going to look at, uh, you know, labor market to figure out what the firms will supply. Okay. Okay, and uh, you know, again, you know, uh, we are going to call that we are in equilibrium if all these markets clear at the same time. You know, so uh, that's basically the idea. Okay, so we are going to discuss the closed economy model. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let let me begin. Okay, so th this is uh, how you can, uh, you know, uh, understand this particular model. Uh, so goods market, uh, you can imagine that, you know, there are consumers in the economy, there is firm in the economy. Okay, there are firms in the economy and uh, there's government in the economy. Okay, and, uh, you know, goods basically are demanded by consumers. Uh, you know, for consumption purpose, uh, for, for by firms for investment purpose, okay, and uh, you know, uh, and the and the government also, you know, uh, for for uh, you know, incurring uh, you know expenses uh, to to uh, produce services for the people, okay. Uh, so you know, so uh, so goods market, you can say that demand comes from uh consumers and let's say you know so i'm going to also you know give you the variables and i'll also tell you what each of these variables you know so there'll be lots of variables in this okay uh, so uh, so just pay attention okay uh, so consumers are going to demand for consumption purpose okay and we are going to assume that it's going to be a function of uh, uh disposable income okay uh, so disposable income is basically, you know, whatever is the income minus the tax. Okay, uh, so that's uh, uh, disposable income. So C is a function of Y minus T. Okay, uh, T is the taxes. So it's possible that T can also be a function of Y. Okay, uh, which is usually the case. Okay, uh, that uh, the tax liability depends on how much you earn. Okay, uh, so C is a function of Y minus T where T can also be a function of Y. Okay, uh, so that's basically, you know, the consumption demand. Okay, and then you have uh, investment, okay, demand for investment. Okay, and it will be a function of real interest rate. Okay, uh, so uh, investment demand is a function of real interest rate. Okay, and then you have government expenditure, okay, uh, which we are going to take it as a policy variable. Okay, so uh, basically what that means is, uh, you know, this is something that government controls, you know, and government can actually choose to increase or decrease it uh, depending on, you know, let's say, uh, you know, uh, it wants to uh, do, make some impact on the economy by uh, changing this. So you can call this a fiscal policy variable. Okay. Uh, and this is something which is exogenously given. 
and uh, government can basically decide its fiscal policy basically what that means is how much to spend okay uh, based on you know whatever goal that the government has okay uh, so right right now we are going to take it as a, a fixed thing okay uh, in the system okay uh, so this is basically the demand by consumers this is the demand by firms and this is the demand by government okay uh, so when do we say we are in equilibrium in goods market okay when uh, the total expenditure is equal to the total income okay uh, so this is uh, the is equation okay this is known as the is equation okay so that's what is is okay uh, so this is c y minus t plus i r plus g is that okay any questions okay uh, this is known as is equation okay and uh, so what you're going to do is this that if you want to plot the is curve okay uh, then you want to plot basically this relationship okay you will put uh, y on the horizontal axis real interest rate on the vertical axis okay and then you're just going to plot you know all those income real interest rate combinations such that this equality is true okay uh, so this is known as the is curve now why do we call it is because it's like investment saving equality you know that's how you can think about it it's investment saving equality uh, so this is investment if you take c and g on the other side you know that's going to give you the, the expression for savings okay uh, so y minus c minus g is basically the savings and that's equal to the investment okay so that's why we call it is curve okay so y is equal to c y minus t plus ir plus g okay this is the is equation okay so you call this is okay is that fine any questions okay uh, there are certain assumptions on these functions we are going to assume that uh, c prime is positive okay uh, so what that means is the higher the disposable income the higher the consumption okay another assumption that we are going to make is that uh you know c prime is going to be between zero and one okay what that means is uh you know uh every additional uh rupee you earn uh you know you're not going to spend full amount of it you're going to save part of it and you're going to consume part of it okay uh, so that's what uh this assumption says okay uh, so these are all standard assumptions it's possible that in the entrance exam you know or you know the questions that you you might come across they may not uh you know uh, then you know one of one or more of these assumptions may not be satisfied in that case you just have to deal with the problem based on the information that they are going to give you in the exam okay don't uh, uh you know don't uh, don't assume uh, something which is not given okay uh, so just just uh, use the model that they have given in the exam and then accordingly proceed okay uh, and then you know there is a, there are assumptions on t also so what are the assumptions on t that t prime is positive okay so what that means is uh, uh, you know the tax liability is also increasing in income okay another thing is that uh, uh, t prime is also between zero and one okay so what that means is any additional rupee that you earn uh, you don't pay that fully okay uh, the full amount you pay a part of it okay uh, as tax and remaining you know is is uh is uh, going to be your uh, you know um remaining amount is something that you you will have access to you know to uh for your own personal spending okay is that clear to everyone okay uh, you also have assumptions on investment as a function of interest rate okay uh, so uh, it is going to be decreasing in interest rate i prime is negative okay so this is uh, uh, also 
uh, something which is standard because you know if if uh, you know you can think of uh, interest rate as uh, uh, as an opportunity cost of investment okay so uh, so basically the cost of borrowing okay uh, to to actually uh, uh, carry out investment so obviously you know if the cost goes up the investment uh, goes down okay uh, so this is uh, the equation of the IS curve. Uh, now, using this, uh, you know, all all this information that uh, we have on T prime, I prime, you know, we can figure out uh, the slope of the IS curve. Okay. Uh, so how do we do that? Well, uh, we can take the derivative uh, of this IS equation uh, with respect to y. Okay, and then we can figure out the sign of dr by dy. Okay, uh, so let's do that quickly. Okay, uh, so we have y minus, uh, sorry, y equals c y minus t plus i r plus g. Let's differentiate this fully with respect to y. Okay, uh, so the left hand side will be one, the right hand side will be c prime y minus t. Uh, and then take the derivative of this with respect to y. So you're going to get dy by dr. Okay, uh, sorry. Yeah, this too. So you're just going to take the derivative with respect to y. Okay, so the derivative of this with respect to y will be 1. Okay, and then uh, the derivative of this with respect to y will be uh, t prime. Okay, t prime. Is that okay? Fine. And then uh, this will be plus i prime r dr by dy. Okay. And this is going to be zero. Okay. Uh, so now we can figure out what is dr by dy. So dr by dy is equal to uh, take this to the other side and you want to get one minus c prime y minus t into 1 minus t prime y okay uh, in divided by i prime r okay now notice that this term is between 0 and 1 okay so this is between 0 and 1 oh, sorry okay so this term is between 0 and 1 okay belongs to open interval 0 1 okay and this term is also between 0 and 1 okay so basically the product is between 0 and 1 so 1 minus something that is between 0 and 1 is also between 0 and 1 and this is negative so this tells you that is curve is downward sloping okay uh, so if you plot is curve this is how it's going to look Okay, so this is IS curve. Is that fine? Is that clear to everyone? Okay. Okay, so this gives you, you know, set of all income interest rate combinations such that, uh, you know, goods market is in equilibrium. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, because I prime is negative, so you know this numerator is positive, so this is negative. Okay. Uh, okay. So this is, you know, uh, basically all these points corresponds to points you know income interest rate combination at which this equation holds okay now you know the questions like this can be asked you know what happens to the is curve if g increases you know where does it shift okay whether it's going to shift to the right or to the left or where where it's going to shift so you know you should be able to do these kind of questions okay uh, you should be able to know uh, that you know if if g increases then what happens if there is some other uh, variable you know inside this equation you know then what happens you know so th all those kind of questions you should be able to answer so uh, so let's quickly check you know if g increases you know where does this curve shifts okay uh, so suppose you are at this point 
okay suppose you are at this point you know if, if g goes up where will you go okay uh, so notice that if g goes up then uh, you know if you are at this point then you know the right hand side becomes bigger than the left hand side so in order to make sure that you know the equality is restored you know what you can do is you can raise the interest rate okay you can raise the interest rate so that this term goes down and the equality will be restored so what that means is you know uh, as g increases the is curve will shift to the right okay because because you have to raise the interest rate so that the equality is you know uh, uh, equality is uh, restored okay uh, so basically you know as g increases is curve shifts to the right okay so that's the kind of thing that you can do you know if you want to figure out uh, where does the curve shifts okay uh, so any questions about this okay now let's talk about the money market okay so uh, so what is money market money market you know you can imagine that uh, uh, there is demand for money okay so why do we demand money for you know we demand money for uh, basically transaction purposes okay or sometimes you also demand money for speculative uh, purposes okay uh, so what what do you mean by that basically you know uh, so just, just imagine a scenario where so okay by the way what is money demand so money demand is basically demand for liquidity demand for holding money okay so obviously if your income goes up you know uh, you would want to spend money uh, you know like you would like to spend more money and if you would like to spend more money you would like to demand more money to keep it in your pocket are you getting my point okay so as income increases your liquidity demand or your demand for holding money goes up okay and what happens is interest rate increases okay now suppose the suppose the bank has increased the rate of interest then you wouldn't want to hold the money right i mean you would want to keep that money in the bank and would like to make frequent visits to the bank to actually withdraw that money because you are losing interest rate okay uh, if you if you try to keep that money in your pocket okay uh, so uh, so basically your demand for money is increasing function of income and your demand for money is a decreasing function of the interest rate that the bank offers okay uh, so uh, so let me just write uh, you know liquidity demand okay is a function of income and nominal interest rate okay so nominal interest rate is the interest rate that the bank offers is that clear to everyone okay and uh, you know uh, so, uh, real interest rate is so this one was real interest rate and this is the nominal interest rate and what is the connection between these two so basically nominal interest rate is real interest rate plus you know some inflation expected inflation okay uh, so so this is you know you can imagine it is in real terms you know return in real terms okay and this is the return in nominal terms is that fine okay uh, so obviously you know when you are going to keep your money in your pocket okay then you are losing out on the interest rate that the bank offers which is a nominal interest rate okay and uh, therefore your opportunity cost of holding money is nominal interest rate okay and uh, and this is you know you can say is the demand for money okay and uh, we are going to just call this real demand for money okay uh, so real demand for money means in real terms okay uh, so uh, uh, so what do you mean by real terms basically you know you can you can just imagine that one of the prices of one of prices of one of the goods is taken as numerator and uh, and you are writing the demand for money in terms of demand for that particular good are you getting my point okay so basically you know the good that particular good which you are taking as numerator is serving as currency is that okay or as a medium of exchange you know that's how you can think about it okay uh, so uh, so what is the money market equilibrium 
so when we say that we are in equilibrium in the money market if the real demand for money is equal to the real money supply okay so real money supply basically this is your nominal money supply and this is divided by the price to make it real money supply okay so this is your lm equation okay is that clear to everyone okay so let me just write this lm is basically all those y i combinations such that the liquidity demand for money is equal to the money supply okay so why do we use lm lm is basically l for liquidity m for money supply okay so it's the liquidity money supply equality okay uh, which uh, you know we call lm is that is that clear to everyone okay uh, so we are going to assume that del l by del y is positive okay and del l by del i so this is a standard model okay where we assume this uh, that as income goes up the liquidity demand goes up as interest rate goes up the liquidity demand goes down okay uh, so basically this is what is true about uh, you know this function l now we can figure out the slope of the lm curve so how do you figure out the slope of the lm curve you can just look at this and then you can differentiate uh, you know uh, both sides with respect to y okay and you will get it okay so let's do the derivation okay uh, so if you want to differentiate this with respect to y you're going to get del l by del y plus del l by del i into di by dy okay which is equal to zero okay and then what is di by dy di by dy is minus del l by del y upon del l by del i okay which is positive because del l by del y is positive del l by del i is negative uh, so obviously this 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 term will be positive okay uh, so if you plot lm curve you know uh, that's going to be upward sloping. Is that okay? That's LM. Okay. And then, you know, you can ask this question that, you know, what happens if money supply goes up? You know, what happens to the LM curve? so obviously you know let's just uh, you know this is how you can do this uh, suppose you are at this point and uh, we are in equilibrium right now money market equilibrium and suppose you increase the right hand side then right hand side becomes bigger than the left hand side at this point so we are no longer in equilibrium in the money market so what how do we restore the equilibrium well we can raise the left hand side and how do we raise the left hand side we can either increase income uh, or we can reduce interest rate okay uh, so in both cases you can see it's a right shift okay so what that means is if money supply goes up the lm curve shifts to the right is that clear to everyone is that clear to everyone okay now what you can do is we can look at you know simultaneous equilibrium in the two markets okay uh, so uh, so let's just do that uh, okay so what we're going to do is you know if you want to plot islm together okay now notice that this is in ry plane this is an iy plane so basically we have to convert either this one into i or this one into r okay so whichever way you like it's the same thing no problem at all you can either convert uh, lm equation into uh, you know something which is a relationship between income and real interest rate or you can convert uh, is equation into something which is 
you know uh, where uh, IS equation becomes uh, you know and uh, a relationship between income and nominal interest rate okay uh, so let me do it here you know let me just write this in terms of R okay so uh, so this is uh, how you can rewrite LM curve okay so this is how you can rewrite LM curve it is all those Y R combinations such that L Y comma R plus pi e is equal to m by p okay so basically you just replace uh, you know uh, i by r plus pi e because this is how i is related to uh, r plus pi e and then you you you're going to get exactly you know uh, uh, the relationship between income and real interest rate you know uh, for the lm uh, equation okay now once you have this now you can just use r y plane to plot both IS and LM together, okay. Uh, so you're gonna get something like this. Okay. Uh, so this is IS. Okay. And this is LM. okay uh, so now let me ask you this question so in ry plane if i change expected inflation which curve will shift is curve or lm curve if i change pi e you know so we are plotting it for a given value of pi e okay uh, so uh, so which curve will shift you know is is it is this going to be is curve or is it going to be lm curve is the LM curve that will shift? Is that okay? Is that fine? Okay. And which direction it will shift? Suppose pi e increases, then which direction it's going to shift? Okay. So if you increase pi e, you know, uh, just 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 look at this equality. Okay. So if you increase pi e, what happens? You know, uh, well, uh, then this term actually goes up okay now if you want to restore equality or to reduce this term okay so how do you reduce this term just reduce r by exactly the same magnitude and then the equality will be restored okay so this tells you that you know if you are at this point okay uh, and a pi e increases then you know you so if 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 you go down by exactly you know uh, by the magnitude of increase in pi e you'll get a new lm curve you know that's basically what's going to happen it's just going to be a you know shift down as you said okay uh, as a result of increase in pi e is that fine okay and this point is basically uh, a point where goods and the money market are in equilibrium at the same time is that okay this point is the point where uh, goods and the money market are in equilibrium at the same time is this clear to everyone is that fine yes okay so now what we can do is you know we can define now that we know how to find goods and money market equilibrium uh, we can define aggregate demand curve okay so what is ad curve okay aggregate demand or ad curve is basically you know it's a relationship between income and price okay it's a relationship between income and price such that both goods market and money market clear okay so what that means is basically uh, c y minus t plus i r plus g is equal to y okay and uh, the second thing is the uh, you know uh, this this equation is also true l of 
y comma r plus pi e is equal to m by p okay so that's the aggregate demand curve is that clear to everyone Okay, so let me tell you how to derive aggregate demand curve from this ISLM curve. Okay, uh, so this is actually uh, straightforward. You know, all that you have to do is you just have to plot uh, the IS curve and the LM curve. Okay. Okay, so this is IS curve and this is LM curve. Okay, okay, now this is where we are right now. Okay, uh, so this is some point where uh, we have equilibrium uh, uh, in both the markets, money market as well as, uh, you know, goods market okay okay now notice that when you plotted lm curve p is fixed okay so p is given so this is for a given level of p okay you have plotted it for a given level of p so what you can do is you can just take this y whatever p is given you know you can put that p here okay and this point is basically a point on the aggregate demand curve is that clear to everyone? Is that clear? Okay, this is one point on the aggregate demand curve. Now you want to figure out the entire aggregate demand curve. So how do you do that? Well, you can change P, right? I mean, we want to figure out how P and Y uh, are related uh, you know, and we want to make sure that goods and money market clear at the same time. Okay. Uh, at every P. Okay. So what we're going to do is we'll change P a little bit. Okay. And then see what happens to Y and R. Okay. Uh, so suppose P increases. So what do you think? Which curve will shift if I increase P? LM curve. Is that okay? So you can see that we have uh, P right over here, the LM curve is shift. So if P increases, okay, if P increases the right hand side, uh, you know, uh, will go down, okay. Uh, so if the right hand side will go down, then in order to restore the equality, okay, uh, you know, we have to uh, reduce income, okay. Uh, so uh, so uh, if you, So basically reducing income means this, okay, this way, going leftwards, okay. So this is for a higher value of P, okay. L, this is LM for high value, higher value of P, okay. Uh, so let me just uh, put that point over here. Okay, so this is the output and this is basically, you know, higher P, lower Y. Okay, so higher P, lower Y. Okay, uh, so uh, you want to get, let's say, let's call this Y prime, let's call this P prime. Okay, and then, you know, when you want to connect points like these, you'll get the graph of aggregate demand curve. Is that clear? Is that clear? Okay, so if I'll give you an IS equation, if I'll give you a LM equation, can you derive uh, aggregate demand curve from it? Okay, you just have to solve this two system together and eliminate r that's all that you have to do just eliminate r from the system and you'll get a relationship between income and price okay that's all that you need to do to figure out aggregate demand curve from the is and the lm curve okay 
now let's talk about labor market okay supply side okay once we have aggregate demand curve we would like to figure out what is aggregate supply curve okay uh, so for that you know we can we need to uh, look at the supply side and we'll study the labor market okay is that clear <clears throat> okay so let's talk about the labor market now okay uh, so uh, so supply side now okay uh, so basically you know um, again we are going to assume capital is fixed okay so the only input that you know the firm will require is labor okay uh, so again that's the assumption uh, so uh, so that we just have to look at the labor market here okay uh, so if you uh, you know i mean the way uh you know the kind of problems that you might see in the exams you know uh, sometimes they give you the labor demand and labor supply curve <clears throat> uh, and sometimes they give you you know some problem where you have to find the labor demand and labor supply curve okay so you already have seen you know what kind of micro problems uh gives you labor demand and labor supply okay so uh, so like for example if you solve the utility maximization problem of the consumer where consumer is interested in uh, supplying basically interested in uh, you know making a choice between consumption and leisure okay then you automatically get the labor supply curve from there okay so that's you know again you know so as i i'm telling you i'm just giving you different different, different variants that you might see in the exam okay so all of them are connected to you know what you have already learned in micro okay uh, so uh, so labor demand is something that you know you will get by uh, solving the profit maximization problem of the firm okay and labor supply is something that you want to get by solving the utility maximization problem of the consumer okay so uh, uh, so you you can get any of you know uh, any combination of these things okay uh, so uh so sometimes you may just get the labor demand labor supply straight away you know, they, they'll just tell you that okay this is the labor demand this is the labor supply and sometimes you may have to solve some profit maximization and utility maximization problem to derive labor demand and labor supply okay is that clear to everyone okay uh, so uh, so let me uh, quickly tell you you know how do you get the supply curve from here okay so uh, it's basically you know you have some production function y which is equal to f l k okay again uh, you know we are going to assume that k is fixed okay uh, so uh, so basically uh, you know it is just about finding uh, labor demand and labor supply first okay so how do you find the labor demand so again we we generally assume that firm is competitive okay uh, so that's the kind of assumption that will be given to you so if it is competitive then you are basically solving you know when you are finding uh, when you are solving this problem uh, you know you are just uh, you know you are just solving for labor right okay so solution to this problem will give you labor demand curve okay labor demand you know which will be a function of p w uh, r and k bar okay is that fine okay uh, you can even ignore this if you wish okay uh, so if you ignore this you know it will just be a function of p w and k bar okay the reason why we can ignore this is because uh, this is just a fixed term you know which is added or subtracted from the from the objective and that's not going to affect the solution okay uh, so this is what you're going to get okay it will be a function of p w and k bar okay and notice that you know effectively if you see it is not not really you know if you solve this problem it is it is actually a function of w by p not i mean you can you can just uh uh, uh 
you know if you, if you just just look at this you know i mean uh, you can divide this whole thing by p okay and it's not going to make any difference to the solution okay so what that means is basically what what matters is a real wage okay nominal wage doesn't matter okay so this is the nominal wage and if you divide w by p basically you are converting the wage into number of units of that particular good whose price is p okay so that is known as the real wage okay because you have converted the wage in real terms and when we are seeing real terms basically in in terms of some some good okay you are paying the wage in terms of some good in our case you are paying uh, you know the wage in terms of this particular good okay uh, so whose price is p okay uh, so you know that's how you can you can um, you know uh, think about this labor demand curve okay and we already know how to solve this problem from from uh, from producers problem so uh, you know we have so, solved plenty of them so you know uh, so i'll not give you examples here okay uh, you can just check out uh, uh uh production videos okay uh, for for examples okay uh, so once you have the labor demand you know uh, then you solve for labor supply okay uh, so sometimes again labor supply might be exogenously given in that case it's just going to be l bar okay and sometimes you know you may have to solve some utility maximization problem of of a consumer where the consumer is actually making a choice of how much amount of uh, uh, C to consume, okay, and how much amount of labor to supply, okay? Uh, so it's going to maximize this uh, with respect to CD and LS, okay, uh, subject to the constraint that P times CD is less than or equal to W times LS, okay? So when you solve this, you will get LS which is also going to be a function of p and w okay and notice that you know uh, uh, again if you see if you divide both sides by p it's not going to make any difference to the constraint so effectively labor supply will also be a function of real wage which is w by p is that okay is that okay okay so in this specific problem you know if you if you just plot uh, labor demand and labor supply okay so you can put labor on the horizontal axis w by p on the vertical axis because you know as i've just told you it is effectively a function of w by p this is also a function of w by p so you can plot it in w by p l space okay so this is a real wage and this is a labor okay so labor demand will be downward sloping you know um, so higher the real wage the lower will be the labor demand okay and labor supply will be uh, well it can be backward mending also uh, but let's just uh, take it uh, as upward sloping for the time being okay uh, so this is labor supply is that fine okay now clearly you can see that because it is both labor demand and labor supply are the function of w by p you know you get uh, some equilibrium employment level okay so you can call this uh, by the way you know there is another thing that i want to tell you you know uh, macro economies don't use l okay uh, so they use n okay uh, so i don't know why they use n but uh, they use n uh, so if you want you can put n here okay uh, let me also do the same thing you know because this is a macro lecture so let me do you know let me put n here okay it's not going to make any difference to anything but you know because uh, that's the notation that macro economists use so i'm going to stick with that okay okay and then this is also okay and this is n star okay uh, equilibrium level of employment okay is that clear to everyone is that fine is 
is that clear okay and this is basically the equilibrium level of real wage now if you want to plot aggregate supply curve okay then how do you do that now once you know the equilibrium employment you can plug this back over here okay and that's going to give you the equilibrium supply okay uh, so that's basically your aggregate supply curve so you can put y on the horizontal axis p on the vertical axis okay and then you know just for this n star okay you'll get some fn star k bar okay uh, so that's going to be you know for some level of p okay so you fix a p and for that level of p you have this n star okay and hence this is going to be fn star okay okay now what do you think will happen if i increase p what do you think will happen to the equilibrium employment if i increase p what do you think so let's assume that you know labor market is completely flexible in the sense that wages adjust quickly okay uh, so what do you think will happen you know uh uh to so if if suppose i increase p you know what will happen to the new uh, where will be the new equilibrium point anyone no okay uh, so notice that you know uh, yes real wage will remain the same absolutely you know because this is the equilibrium so if you think absolutely you know, it's, it's just if for a higher p it's the same employment level the reason is because if you increase p you know the w will also increase by you know the same fraction and then eventually this ratio will be the same because this is where the equilibrium is equilibrium real wages so what that means is if wages adjust quickly then in, as a result of increase in price the wage will also rise and the equilibrium will be restored over here okay so nothing will happen to the equilibrium employment and if nothing happens to the equilibrium employment nothing will happen to the equilibrium output okay and what that means is that if you increase p your equilibrium output stays exactly where it was earlier so you will get an you will get an aggregate supply curve which is vertical is that fine is that fine okay now they can also ask you questions where wages don't adjust quickly you know there is some rigidity in the wage let's say wage doesn't go down uh, and then in that case you know uh, a nominal wage doesn't go down you know there is some minimum level of nominal wage so we'll do some problems like that you know so that uh, you get an understanding of how to handle questions like that but the key idea here is this that you have to find aggregate supply curve in you know using you know whatever information that they have given you and uh, and uh, you know you find the equilibrium level of uh, demand for employment uh, you know using by solving the firm's profit maximization problem and uh, you know you will get uh, uh, you know uh, the the supply decision okay possibly by solving a utility maximization problem and once you have the demand supply equilibrium you know then you can figure out what is the equilibrium output supplied using the production function by plugging in the equilibrium employment in the production function and then you know you just figure out you know what happens if price goes up what happens if price goes down you know depending on the assumptions of the model you know you will figure out the relationship between price and the output and that's aggregate supply curve okay now if you are interested in the overall equilibrium 
okay then you have so suppose they give you information about the aggregate demand curve you know basically uh through through these kind of functions they'll also give you information about the money market through this kind of information then you have to find the aggregate demand curve here they'll give you in the labor market you know uh, what are the conditions and then you have to find the aggregate supply curve and then if you want to find the overall equilibrium okay then you have to put aggregate demand and aggregate supply curve together are you getting my point and that's going to give you the equilibrium output and uh, the price okay so once you have aggregate you already you have got aggregate demand curve from this information you have aggregate supply curve from this information you put them together and you'll get the equilibrium output and price are you getting my point is that clear now once you're going to get the equilibrium output and price okay then you plug equilibrium output back into you know because you know that that particular point on the aggregate demand curve correspond to some intersection of islm curve you know some point on the intersection of islm curve and that's how you can determine the interest rate okay so basically all these endogenous variables you know price wage employment consumption investment income you know uh, price uh, you know interest rate real interest rate all these can be determined just by solving the system in this way have you all understood this have you all understood this okay and then you know the questions like this can be asked you know what happens if government expenditure goes up you know so what happens to the aggregate demand curve if government expenditure goes up what happens to the price if government expenditure goes up what happens to the equilibrium employment uh, or basically equilibrium output if if the government expenditure goes up in this entire economy are you getting my point so you should be able to answer questions like that is there are, these are simple comparative statics questions okay that 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 can easily be answered uh, just by you know if you keep this model in mind in this framework in mind you can easily answer you know questions like that okay